Well, hey, folks, it's Robbie Smith with the Catawba River Baptist Association. I'm so glad that you're with us today. We have joining with us today John Terry from Glen Alpine Baptist Church, First Baptist Church, in the big city of Glen Alpine or Glen Alpine, which, which is right. Alpine. Alpine. I have heard both from different folks. Well, I'm so glad you're here with us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been at the church. I've been in church for five years. I've married uh, thir- 35 years hey. and uh, have two boys and expecting a second grandchild in November. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And how long have you been at the church? Five years. Five as years. Of June, June the 14th. Great. So, yeah. Now, have you just served churches here in the community, in the in North Carolina or North other Carolina, places? Yeah, I've yeah. had one. This is my second church. This is the first full time church. I've okay. Had. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, I know that you've been here a while, making an impact in the community. What are some of the things about the community that you've noticed that you like uh, that the church has embraced? Um, our churches, other denominations, work well together, mm-hmm. and we, we, we got a pantry started uh, and uh, some other things, but the community of Glen Alpine is just special. It's, it's just a, a people born and raised there all their life, and, and so, you know, it's, it, it's just a, a historical little place, and even the school, is, they don't want to tear it down because it's just so historical, and the ball field that sits there and, you know, the old, uh, the old days, as they call it, so... You still have that mindset and those people that, that uh, you know, and of course they're getting to the age now where many of them are passing away. So it is a, a often a sad day in Glen Alpine when someone that was born there and lived their whole life there and then, uh, you know, their time has come. And so we've seen a few of that happen here in the last little bit. And it, it is you know, just unfortunate, but uh, Glen Alpine keeps on going though. So. Well, you are right. One of the things I've noticed about your church and your community, a lot of the churches do a lot of things together, I think. Uh, one of the things that another church in the community had told me about, y'all do a uh, fifth Sunday sing yeah, with yeah. all different denominations. Is yeah, that right? Yeah. How does that work? Uh, we they, now, that, of course, it's been done long before I ever got there. I didn't originate, or I wasn't, but uh, but I said sure, I'd love to keep this going. And so we uh, we meet at a rotational base. Of course, we're not able to do it right now, but when we're at full capacity, we do it. And most churches we go to, we are at full capacity when we have it. There is mm-hmm. no seats available. Uh, we were one of the few churches that are large enough to hold it. Our sanctuary is quite large. so. But uh, but the fact is we rotate the service to five, I think it's five churches, but we might have as many as seven show up to sing. And so it's, it's grown because our churches have grown. Wow. So it's a great way to come together and hear the talents of other churches, the different aspects of singing and praising to the Lord, because we all do it a little different, but yet we're all all under one common goal, and that's Jesus Christ, eh? proclaiming him and, and singing to his praises. So, that's right. That's so. good. Well, tell me, how has COVID-19, I say that with a dreaded right. feeling in my heart about it, but how has that affected the way your church has done ministry the last well, few months? Well, I preached out of the back of a pickup truck, so that was different. So uh, that was an. That's inf- somebody yeah. told me about yeah. that. Yeah, so and, that uh, was a little interesting. But uh, my neighbors got to hear me preach for the first time, so that was good. And uh, that's because they were out in the yard when I was preaching. Uh, we did that a couple Sundays, and then right after that, we were, we went inside. We've been inside for almost a month now. We spread out. We have an upstairs if we had to. Uh, we. We have a big enough auditorium that we can spread out pretty easily, uh, and so we've done that. Um, and we took up all the songbook. We we use the screen, which is kind of not the way we normally traditionally do it. So we've had to adjust some things. Uh, we made a one way to the bathroom and back. Uh, the, the, so we just took out some things to make to make sure that everybody was comfortable when they came to church, and that's what we want to do. Uh, we we, you know, we just want to make sure everybody comes, and, and you, you know you know I don't. We do have those that wear a mask the whole time. We have some that wear it in the church and then take it off once they're seated. Um, and, you know, me as a pastor can't really wear a mask and preach. But So it's affected a lot of things. But uh, but we we do Facebook Live uh, on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. And then, the, and then we do the – we actually have a service on Sunday at 11. That's the only one we're doing just to, so we don't have to double duty on our cleaning crew and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. So how can people see your service if they want to see it online? I think you do Bible studies during the week yes, I do online a, as well. Yes, I do at 6.30. I do a prayer time, and, and people are encouraged to. Now, I can't read the screen while I'm doing the message, so if you put a prayer request up, I will get to it. 
I just can't see it while I'm doing it because it's too far from my eyesight. <laughs> uh, and I got, uh, but uh, but we do a 6:30 prayer time every Wednesday, a Facebook Live. It's First Baptist Glen Alpine. That's how it's written out. But my, uh, my wife runs that, and we have another administrator from the church that does that, and they keep up. And but I do the one on Wednesday night, and I'm the one that makes it go live. So I don't have access to what's being said on it uh, at the time because I'm trying to concentrate on what I have in front of me. So, but we do that prayer time, and then we do 11 o'clock on Sunday live uh, feed, and we've been doing that for probably a year or two now. Uh, but we instead of every other week like we're doing now we do every every sunday at 11 o'clock um and and so that those because we have many in our church that just can't get out at all and so um and i'm sure it's it's affected our attendance but when you add to facebook live we've had a pretty good showing on facebook and so we want to encourage those to keep listening and we even did a, a prayer we even did a anoint prayer anointing for somebody or a prayer mm-hmm. uh, intercessory prayer for somebody that was couldn't come but i knew they were watching on facebook and i they asked for prayer i says well if they ask we're going to bring the elders of the church and down and we're going to pray for them so we did a little different but uh that's what lord led me to do it and i believe god's going to do great things through that just being obedient to him so using technology uh using things we haven't done before uh you know outdoor services all unique stuff but i became an instant televangelist i wasn't you know (laughs) wasn't planning on but uh I've enjoyed the challenge, but yet and I'm ready to get back to full capacity church, and we're going to do that when when it's the right time. So great. Well, John, I'm going to let you look in the camera in just a minute, but just tell folks how they can pray for you, how they can pray for the church, and uh, and I'm sure those who listen from our different churches, we have 68 churches. Mm-hmm here in Burke County of our Catawba River Baptist Association churches. And we, one of the reasons why I do this every week, I want us to be praying for one another because every church of those 68 churches, it's incredible how every church is a little bit different and the needs of those churches are different. So if you just take a few minutes sharing what those prayer requests and prayer yes. needs are. Yes. Our church is a 80% uh, senior uh, church, I'd say 80% being kindly, but uh, and I, when I say that, uh, many are 70 plus. And uh, but the thing is, we've been hit with, uh, and this is what we really need prayer for. We've been hit with some deaths that are what I would call unexpected and very young. When you consider our congregation, 60 uh, uh, years old, we've had two pass away that were in their 60s, and. Uh, and so these are were key men of our church, uh, and uh, then we have another one that's battling some issues that uh, uh, that is a pro- another one that's an active, active member in our church. And so and so we see a lot of that affecting us because we, you know, sometimes when you get up in age, you expect to be slowed down a little bit, and you expect that some of your older members. But these are some very active members, and and and, and you know, so and they're hard to replace, <laughs> no matter who they are. Uh, and also just seeing some of those that are struggling with the health issues that they're going through and they're trying their best to keep serving God and they're trying their best to stay active and their bodies are not just allowing them to do so. As an older church, we do we are, we are having some more come in. We do have some young people through being grandchildren coming into church. And But uh, but knowing that those, that it just hurt, breaks my heart to see those that have been in Glen Alpine for so many years and not, uh, some of them aren't lifetime Glen Alpine, but still they're they're part of this community and uh, so pray for that and our community as well and we we uh, we as a community invest a lot in the people in Glen Alpine and we want you to pray for that though you would be surprised we started this pantry uh, thing uh, many years ago uh, three years ago um, we did not know the need was this great mm. so and the school with the sits in my backyard uh, needs our prayer there's kids there that have never entered church in their whole life. <laughs> it's hard to believe in today in, in a Christian world that, that, that that's true, but have never been able to get into a church. And uh, it's it's just a busy, busy life. And so uh, everybody, you know, one thing that's left out, unfortunately, is church. And boy, what a great time it is when we get fellowship. And I think we're starting to learn that now with this COVID-19, that, uh, that, that fellowship, the food, the fun, the other aspect of the gospel uh, of getting the gospel out the, that part is so missed now. So it, don't take for granted your worship and and praise the Lord. So, but I do ask you to pray for our church as we are dealing with a 
a lot of deaths in the last two years, but specifically the last six months. So if you could do that, we'd appreciate that. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate your ministry here with us over the past five years, and I'm looking forward to seeing what God's going to do through your ministry. One of the things I'm encouraged is that pastors like you, like yourself, you are doing whatever it takes to get the message of Christ out, whether it be sitting on or standing in the back of a pickup truck uh, out in the heat or making things safer inside. Uh, I appreciate our pastors who are cleaning and working extra hard. You know, some people think that during that time of quarantine where the pastors were just having it easy, that is just not the case. Many like yourself have learned to do things digitally and that's been outside of our experiences in the past. And uh, finding new ways of cleaning our buildings to keep our people safe, not only our people, but the community, because we want to be a good witness and be good neighbors to our community. So thank you for doing that, for leading the way, and I thank your church as well, as we all partner together to reach communities for Christ. Thank you. Again, thank you for joining us. If you are part of our one of our 68 churches here in Burke County, I pray that you'll continue to, to share the gospel. Yes, things are different. Yes, church is different. But yes, the Great Commission still stands that we're to be sharing the gospel, whether it be an online or pick up the telephone and calling and checking on folks. But we need to also be praying for the people who have not received Christ yet. Again, I said almost every week of our 90,000 plus people in Burke County, 63,000 are unreached with the gospel. And we ought to be praying for each of these people by name every week that they would hear the gospel, that we would share it with them and pray for them, strengthening them so they would hear the word of God, which has changed our lives. That's what the gospel is about. Thank you for joining us. May God bless you as you minister this week. To God be the glory. Great things he has done.